Hey there, fourth trimester listeners. Our program today is proudly sponsored by Family Album, your secure haven for sharing baby photos and videos. Head over to the App Store today, search Family Album one word, download the app, and start creating a legacy of love one photo at a time. Hi, I'm Sarah Trott, and welcome to the fourth trimester podcast. I'm a new mama, and this podcast is all about postpartum care for the first few months following birth, the time period also known as the fourth trimester. My postpartum doula, Esther Gallagher, is my co-host. She's a mother, grandmother, perinatal educator, birth and postpartum care provider. Fourth trimester care, our topic, is about the practical, emotional, and social support parents and baby require. And importantly, it helps set the tone for the continuing journey of parenting. Hi, this is Sarah Trapp. Welcome back to the fourth trimester podcast. I am extending a recording that I did once before with David Arell, inviting him back for a second episode with us because we have so much to discuss on the topic of all things fatherhood. And I'll introduce him in a moment. And before I do, I'd like to remind everyone that we have a website, which is fourthtrimesterpodcast.com. And we have Facebook, Instagram. You can go and subscribe to our show on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please click subscribe. Please leave us a review. It helps us with discovery for new listeners. So you'll be helping out other parents. And so we encourage you to do that as well. So thank you so much, David, for continuing to be a guest on our show. Welcome back. So to introduce David, he is an author, an entrepreneur, a consultant, coach. He lives in Fairfax, Virginia. He coaches men on how to be more fully prepared and how to embrace and embody healthy masculinity, especially through the powerful modalities of partnership and parenting. He has written a book, so definitely go check that out. His book is called Welcome to Fatherhood, The Modern Man's Guide to Pregnancy, Childbirth, and Fatherhood, better known as simply WTF, Welcome to Fatherhood. So welcome to you, David. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Yeah. So happy to have you back. So in our last conversation, we talked about the top three topics that you tend to go through with new dads, things that we wish dads knew. If you haven't listened to that episode, definitely go back and check it out. Listen to that one too. Today, we wanted to touch on kind of the topic that we just mentioned in your introduction, actually, which is this topic of healthy masculinity. It's not something that I think a lot of men are thinking about or exploring. It's just this innate thing that happens. For a lot of women, I've had discussions with them about in their transition to motherhood that anything that isn't necessarily thought through beforehand, there can be a tendency to default, to default into the experience that they had growing up, the examples that they had around them. And so being proactive and curating an experience, writing down or just thinking about how you want your own experience to be can go a really long way, especially when it comes to thinking about what kind of parent do I want to be? to feel? What do I want my relationship to feel like? How do I want that to work? And so we talk a lot on this on this program about expectations and about preparation, which we talked about before as part of the mapping sessions that you do with new fathers. So that's incredible. Thank you for your work that you do. So yeah, so just maybe just to warm us up, like what are we even, what are we talking about with this concept of healthy masculinity? Well, Sarah, I think that's the uh, million dollar question these days or with inflation, it's now the $10 million question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's something that I think it's an undercurrent that sort of permeates our culture as a whole and where it really starts to kind of, you know, go from being an undercurrent to the the waves on the surface is in that new space, that uh, space of new parenthood, especially for us from, you know, I'm a guy, I'm a dad. So that's my experience that's mine and that's who I work with. But a lot of the guys that I see, that's the question that's up for them. They're very clearly, hey, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the dad that's like smoking cigars in the waiting room and high fiving my buddies because the the nurse came in and said I had a boy or I had a girl, or whatever. Like I want to be, I want a parent. I'm a partner. I want to be in the delivery room. I want to be with my partner. I want to like catch the baby, cut the cord. I want to be right. I want to get my skin to skin. And so they want to really embody this new vision, this new version of what does it mean to be healthy masculine, but they don't really have any good ideals out there. There's not like a really clear picture of what does it mean to be an awesome, great parent and partner. And I I know new moms struggle with these same things. What does it mean to be a great mom? We get all these like competing demands. It's like the superwoman with the cape and she's nursing 
and she's got like her, you know, her judicial robe on and she's like changing a diaper. It's like, these are all these impossible ideals of being like an A player in every possible domain of your life. And us mm-hmm. guys having yeah. our own version of that sort of what's the ideal, what's the expectation, what's reality, what's my experience, how can I understand my experience in a way that's supportive and encouraging and opening and yet why do I feel like I'm failing kind of no matter what. So it's all a big open question, Sarah. When I get the final answer, I will happily come back and you will hear it first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think we're touching on the, this concept of stereotypes, like masculinity stereotypes, you know, boys don't cry, like classic thing, or, you know, what are these things that get ingrained sometimes culturally? And so when it comes to fatherhood, when, when men are preparing to become a father, there's like these, these labels around being a protector a role model, a caretaker, a provider, a father. I know when we talked about this a little bit, when we were prepping a few weeks ago, we were talking about like, you know, men getting up, like the hunting, like this drive to like go out there and hunt and protect. And what are the versions of that kind of pre and post fatherhood? Yeah, that's, that's a a good lead in there. One of the, the whole quarter of my book devoted to fatherhood, the postpartum chapter, uh, the fourth Mm -hmm. trimester, I even call it in my book is titled protect and serve. And that's sort of the embodiment that a lot of us guys really feel into. Like I I want to be a protector and I want to serve my partner and serve my family. Mm. And what's, what's the fine line there? How do I show up? What does it mean to be a protector? Does it mean go make a bunch of money? But if I'm out making money at my job, then I'm not home serving. Well, if I'm only home serving, unless I have like a trust fund or a bunch of passive income, then I'm not really protecting my family's financial well-being if I'm home all the time. So they kind of get themselves caught in all these things. They see like, you know, the tough macho guy, like most of the guys I work with, they see the tough macho guy and they're like, yeah, I'm not really trying to be like, you know, some like dude like that. And then they see the guy with, you know, the man bun and what playing a ukulele with birds landing on his shoulder. Like, well, that's kind of cool, but I'm not, I'm not really shooting for that either. Like what's, what's this middle road where I can still be me. I can still, you know, feel like I'm legitimately grounded in my deep masculinity, just like I want my partner to be grounded in her deep femininity. But then how do I show up in this way to be an effective protector and a protective, uh, an effective caretaker in that serving domain? And with you said, the stereotypes, you know, in one of my classes of all these like silly pictures of like Homer Simpson with like an X, like we don't want to be like Homer. We don't want to be like, you know, Clint Eastwood, the strong, stoic, quiet type. We don't want to be like this bodybuilder, ginormous guy that's all muscles and no heart. Like you, there's a lot of anti examples, but there's not a great, a lot of great examples. Like, oh, look at this guy. He's like, you know, he's capable. He's not the buffoon dad and all the sitcoms and commercials who can't do anything right. He's, he's reliable. He's dependable. He takes care of his family. He finds ways to make a good, the right sacrifices of the right things at the right times. And for us guys in the trenches, it's like half the time we don't know which way is up, which way is down. And it just, we feel the struggle, but we don't have those ideals of what the successes can look like so that we can sort of try to emulate them or replicate what we've seen be successful elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Do you ever run into questions around the, I'm not the mom. So, you know, she does the baby stuff. I don't really know, like kind of an intimidation or like men waiting to feel like they're invited into playing some of those roles. Yeah. and, And honestly, Sarah, that's where I feel so many of the guys I work with they've sort of painted themselves into that corner. You know, they defer out of a sense of respect and responsibility. Like, oh, well, she's the mom, you know, I, I'll be over here. I don't want to do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. Do, I don't know how to do it. I'm, I don't want to do it wrong. It may, it may or may not surprise you, but a lot of men have never held an infant until the nurse or doctor or midwife or whoever says, dad, do you want to hold your baby? And they're like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> yes is the correct answer, but I am absolutely terrified here. They're, it's like they're being handed, you know, the most delicate thing in the world, which one sense it is, but like all that fear. So they're very uncomfortable. And so, mm-hmm. you know, when I, when I'm able to catch the guys pre baby, I'm like, look, you know, get, this is a recent blog post of mine on my site, like skin to skin, get your skin to skin dads. You want to be in there. You want to do as much of everything as much as you can from the first hour plus one minute because mama gets first skin to skin, give her the full 60 minutes and then be there and take the shirt off and sit right down, get your blanket, get your skin to skin. You want baby to see you as primary caretaker. Also, you want baby to feel your vibe, feel your voice. They've already felt your voice echoing through the womb. 
Now they can feel it chest to chest or, or they can get your smell or your, your chin scruff or whatever, whatever's you, they can kind of imprint on you just like they imprint on mama and, you know, diaper changes, if mama's pumping, so you can do bottle feeding to be a team player on the, on the feeding or whatever that looks like as much as possible. You want to be in there from the beginning so that you are starting at this place of shared with co-parents from it's not pilot and co-pilot. We're both co-pilots and sure everybody, all, all the dads I know, they're very happy to say she had the baby. She's parent one. I'll be parent one a, and that's great. Nobody needs to like, we don't need to argue about this stuff. It's all about just being that team. Like we referenced in our previous conversation, it's all about building that sense of teamwork, connectedness. We are strengthening our relationship together so that we can be great parents, not, oh, I'm the mom, you're the dad, and all that stuff, all that static just tends to snowball. So you want to get ahead of that as much as possible. And if you're in the static, find ways out of it through turning, I think you mentioned that a moment ago, those Mm -hmm. unspoken expectations into shared agreements or turn those unspoken hopes into shared plans where you're, you're not talking about a thing rather than talking from a place of frustration, resentment, et cetera. Because those things, especially resentment, is a thief from your relationship. So wherever that resentment is, you want to replace it with gratitude, teamwork, appreciation, through building those shared agreements, through sharing, turning those hopes into plans. So I sorry I went on a little bit of a, a run there, but these are all, all of these things are so deeply intertwined when it comes to strengthening and building that relationship as teammates, as co-parents, so that you, together you can take care of baby rather than the dads that sit off to the side and now they feel like a third wheel. And now mama's like, why am I doing everything by myself? And he's like, well, you wouldn't let me hold the baby three weeks ago. Like it, it creates all this, like this vicious circle of, of shame and blame. So I want to replace shame and blame with space and grace. Oh, I love that so much. Hey, fellow parents, can we take a moment to reflect on the joyous chaos that is parenthood? You know those days when our hearts swell with love at the sight of our little ones and we're bursting at the seams to share every adorable moment with the world. But let's be real. Some things are better kept in the family, and your loved ones who matter the most aren't always close by, and they might not be that tech-savvy either. So how can you easily share your baby's beautiful growth with loved ones while keeping your precious memories secure? I remember the frustration of trying to use some of the big tech photo solutions, only to find they fell short of what I needed. That's when I stumbled upon something truly remarkable, the family album map. The Family Album Map was created to give parents a secure and easy way to share photos and videos with loved ones. It's an orderly and totally secure haven for your family's personal memories. I love that there's no third-party ads, no unwanted eyes, unlimited storage, and that it's totally free. So to all the parents who are out there still trying to use other messaging apps for your kids' photos, it's time to level up your family photo game with a free photo sharing app. Head over to the App Store today, search Family Album, one word, download the app, and start creating a legacy of love one photo at a time. I love that. And when fathers are first learning how to do some of these things, I mean, you mentioned birth classes, there are ways to build confidence and maybe just giving men permission to be that co-pilot is a good place to start giving men permission or, or even just raising the topic. Like what is your version of masculinity for you as a father? Something I want to go back to as well is just the, what you're talking about of gratitude and appreciation in a relationship. I mean, even before pregnancy, like this is about foundation, right? The foundation isn't suddenly going to be perfect and strong just because you've had a baby together. Monumental milestone to go through as a couple for sure. But the stronger the foundation is in the first place, the stronger it's going to be afterwards, right? And to continue building, like you said before, um, there's no, there's no bouncing back. We've um, had this topic on our show before with other uh, guests as well saying, you know, there's no going back. There's only through, there's only through, it's different. It's this new thing. So like, as you continue to build and build and build every day, every hour, every week, every year, you're, you're building on top of the foundation that you have. So I think I would just apply your advice to all relationships all the time. (laughs) And then in particular, when going through such an important event, like becoming a parent for the first time. Yeah, absolutely, Sarah. And mm-hmm. I think, you know, one of the things I want to just add another wrinkle to there is that the idea of this gratitude, I think is so important. I had, I wrote a piece recently in one of my, on my blog calling gratitude, the sixth love language. Uh, Cause I talk a lot about the five love languages and being intentional about how you're connecting with your partner in ways that they can best receive it and appreciate it. And that, that's the five love languages. You know, I'm always happy to recommend those, but gratitude is the sixth one. It really 
can sort of become a trump card for the rest of those where it, who doesn't want to hear, hey, you know, you did a really good job with that. And, or I really appreciate how you showed up for me or for baby or whatever. Like that's just like, that's win, win, win. And one of the things that guys really struggle with, and again, I'm not an evolutionary anthropologist, so I don't have studies I'm going to cite and point to here, but I have a lot of experience with a lot of new dads. And so one of my favorite tricks back when I, before I had WTF as a book and it was a workshop is all the guys would show up and I would sit there and be like, okay, guys, let's talk about what we're excited about when baby gets here. And invariably, some guy would be like, oh, I can't wait to take my kid fishing. We're going to go to this pond. And another guy like, yeah, I want to, you know, I've always played like, baseball growing up. I want to take my, can't wait to see my kid playing t-ball and got her little hat on and her bat and riding a bike. And I'm like nodding. I'm like, okay, so how old is your baby and all these visions you have? And they're all kind of like, oh, uh, like three or four. I'm like, yeah, you got a thousand days and nights of baby prior to t-ball and fishing and bike riding. And so what I gather from that is so many of us guys, we just don't have a, a, an easy reference point of what does it mean to be a dad of a new baby? We get when they're walking and talking, okay, now dad zone, I can show up. But this early infancy, so many of the guys I talk to, they're like, I, I, I don't know. And you see that show up. They don't know how to hold a baby. They don't feel, well, let's say they don't feel comfortable holding a baby. They don't just sort of like, oh yeah, of course you just do this. They're like, how do I not break it? You know, or like when they're feeding a baby with the bottle, like all these things are very, they feel very out of their depth. And so having, you know, those shared agreements about, hey mama, why don't you show me how you want me to change the diaper? Like, well, I don't care. I don't have a, I don't have a dog in this fight about which way we do it. So why don't you show me? So I encourage you guys to be vulnerable and ask for help, ask for guidance, ask for assistance to show mama that they're available, interested, and ready, and that they're willing to learn. And they can. this builds that trust, that credibility, that sort of shared sense of how we do these things, which those are those little tiny planks in the bigger bridge of, of strengthening that we space of the relationship. So just want to speak to the challenges that a lot of new guys have. They just don't know what's going on. And so they tend to see to sort of shut down and pull back. And I'm like, no, you got to open up and go forward. Like you were saying, you got to go through this and lean in to parenthood as a way to sort of show up and, and step up. Don't just show up and sit back, you know, show up and step up. It's kind of one of the phrases I like to use there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love that. If there are dads listening right now and you were to address those dads directly, are there, a, are there a couple of questions, maybe two or three, any questions that you would have them sit down and write down and think about and answer for themselves around this topic? Yeah, I would say kind of get clear. Number one, and we talked to, you know, we started this episode talking about a healthy masculinity. What is your ideal of health, healthy masculinity? What does that really look like to you? And if you if you draw a blank, that's A, perfectly expected. Bingo, that's the, the normal answer. But don't stop there. Start to delve into that. What does it mean to protect and serve? That's the, the phrase I use because I think that covers a big chunk of what most of the guys I'm working with are shooting for. But what does it mean for you and your life and your unique circumstances to protect? Does that mean you're a financial provider? Does that mean you are, you know, adding security cameras? Like, what does this look like for you? And what does serve look like for you? Again, it's your unique life, your unique relationship with your partner and your unique circumstances with your family and baby, et cetera. But don't just leave that as a, I don't know. Because if you have an ideal, it gives you something to sort of like lean towards or strive towards or try to bring from the ideal into the real. So number two would be, what are your aspirations when it comes to being a great partner and a great dad. And again, like um, Sarah's question was spot on because she wants you to write this down. Don't just sort of have a vague notion and think you've answered the question. Like actually write it down. As a great partner, what that means to me is this. And then you write out five things about what you think being a great partner, given your capacity, preferences, abilities, et cetera, are. And what does it mean to be a great dad to baby? Because again, the relationship is primary, but then what does it mean to be a great dad and being reliable, dependable, also able to soothe your infant, not just, oh, I don't know, baby's crying. Here you go, mama. Like you want to develop these capacities to where you are the 1A co-parent there. And then finally, kind of what do I want my future trajectory to look like? Do I want to work more? Do I want to work less? Are we planning on having more kids? Even if that's an open question, like this, this is day one for the rest of your life. And what do you want to have as that vision beyond just your personal sense of healthy masculinity, beyond just your relationships with your partner or baby, but 
Are you are you trying to make partner at your firm? And if so, how does that fit into this other thing? These other things that are more important. Are you trying to retire or semi-retire in a few years? Are you trying to get a remote job? Like getting more clarity on all of these things almost acts as a sort of like the secret, like a magnetic attractor to help you achieve those goals by moving you forward, but also kind of sort of magnetize the circumstances around you to make achieving those goals a little bit more easy and a little bit quicker, the more clear you are about having articulated them and the very list that Sarah wisely asked you to write down with a pen and paper where you can see it every day. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much, David. If someone wants to work with you directly, can they do that? And how can they do that? Uh, Yes. Thank you, Sarah. They can reach out to me directly at david at welcometofatherhood.com. I answer all my own emails. I don't have a publicist team. I don't have executive assistants. It's me, and I will happily answer your emails. In addition to that direct question support, you know, Sarah was kind enough to recommend my book, uh, Welcome to Fatherhood, can be purchased on Amazon. I definitely recommend the Audible version because A, I'm reading it, so you get all the proper inflections. And, you know, FYI, there's a few curse words there. I'm from Philly. We like a little salt and pepper on our food and a little salt and pepper in our language. So just don't listen to it if you have an older child in the back seat. You may be having some explaining to do to mama as to where they heard that word. But it's easy to listen to when you're at the gym or driving to work or whatnot. And then I have some classes and workshops and coaching sessions. There's a lot of ways to connect with me and my work. And I try to make it a variety. So if you want to be quiet and just sit in your room, you can read my blog. If you want to really get involved, you can show up one of the the new dad support groups I have, or you can set up a coaching relationship, just do one-on-one with me. There's a lot of options out there. I aim to protect and serve my audience as well. Thank you, David. And David, thank you so much. You've very generously offered a special offer for listeners of Fourth Trimester Podcast exclusively. So folks, if you want to take advantage of this, please do. So when you're booking with David, please mention Fourth Trimester Podcast. You can use a discount code, which is Welcome Fourth, for 25% off of his thriving workshops, the mapping exercises. So definitely book him, use the discount code. We'll put all this information on our website as well. So you can find it on fourthtrimesterpodcast.com. We'll link to the book. It will all be there. So go check it out. Thank you so much, David. We really appreciate your conversation and your time today. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you having me on your show here today. You can subscribe to this podcast in order to hear more from us. Thank you for listening, everyone. And I hope you'll join us next time on the fourth trimester. The theme music on this podcast was created by Sean Trott. Hear more at soundcloud.com slash Sean Trott. Special thanks to my true loves, my husband, Ben, daughter, Penelope, and baby girl, Evelyn. Don't forget to share the fourth trimester podcast with any new and expecting parents. I'm Sarah Trott. Goodbye for now. Hello again, bicycle man I know you're doing all that you can I wrote the song, simple and true I wrote the song, I'll sing a song for you You got your wheels, you got your gears you ride around town without any fear You got your pedals, you got your brakes You always wear your helmet for safety's sake song I sing a song for you